What's up YouTube? Welcome everyone back to the channel and if you're new here, welcome. This video will be a continuation of the previous video where we learned how to load a CSV file into Python. Now we're actually going to be placing this CSV information into this GUI's list box. If you haven't watched the previous video, I'd highly recommend doing so just so that you'll be up to speed on what's going on here. Basically our end goal is to create this GUI and what this is doing is basically loading this brand information. It's just a spreadsheet of some basic car information and when we click on a brand in this GUI it actually updates with the values from the spreadsheet. This video will cover how to get the brands from this column on the left into this list box here on the interface and the next video will cover how to actually get this button to take the selection of the list box and update these values here on the bottom right. So let's get started. Last video we covered how to get all these column brands into a list and we can print the list so print list of entries and if we run the file we can see that the column information from these brands is actually in Python. Now we actually want to get this list into the tkinter list box. So what we're going to do is create a root variable, define the geometry, root.main loop, and we're going to create a list box. Creating a list box is simple. All we have to do is say list box and use the root variable. We're going to say list box dot grid. The row is zero and the column is zero. Separate those with a comma. Now we have an empty list box. So there's two ways to put the brand values into the list box. I'm going to cover both of them. One way to do is, is to say for x, y, and enumerate the list of entries, listbox.insert, we're going to insert at the index of x the value of y. And what that's doing is that's parsing over this list of brands and inserting at the x index. x starts at zero and increases for every iteration and places the y value. So that's going to place each value into the list box. So there we go. We have the information stored in the list box. Another way you could do it is to create a string variable. We could say that var equals string var and the value is actually the list of entries. Then we go into the list box widget and say that list variable equals var. These two things do the exact same process and you get the same result when you run the program. I like this method easier because it's pretty much just one line of code whereas the other one's two. But any way you do it, you get the same answer. So here we have our data into the list box and what you're going to notice is that we have this title brand at the very top. And that's because it's including this sort of title row at the top and we don't really want that in the GUI. So we're going to go into our data and actually delete the first row. That's going to completely remove this, this top title row from our data. So now once we run it we can see that the title brand is gone from the list box which is what we want. So that covers most of the list box. The last thing we're going to do is add a button to work with this selection. How does tkinter know what option we're hovering? It's an essential part of our GUI in the beginning because that's how we choose what values to update. Let's create a button and add a command called update. We're going to say that button is root, the text equals update, and the command is update. And we're going to say that this is on a grid with row of five, column is zero. Let's create a function called update. And in the update function, we actually want to grab the index of the cursor. So what that means is if we're on the zero with index in this list box, we want the value to return zero. Thankfully, there's a built-in method for doing this. So we're gonna create a variable called index and that's going to be listbox1.curseSelection. Now let's print out the value of index and see what we get. When we, hover a, when we hover a value and update, we're returning a tuple, and that is the fourth index, so 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If we go down to 4, 5, 6, 7, it's going to return 7. We only want the very first value of that tuple, so we're going to re-index it and call it 0. And now once we load this, we're going to see that whatever index we click on, we're getting the correct value. This is going to be important for the next video because this lets us know where we are in the data and how to actually grab the correct information. 
So that covers this video. The next and final video will be covering how to actually build and update the rest of the GUI. How are we going to take this index that we're getting and use it to update the correct information? I hope this video is helpful and if you have any questions or future video suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Best of luck everyone and see you next time.